one. So the latest adaptation of Scream really centers around the Carpenter sisters. Yes, Sam is the main focus, right? She's the main target, the main character. But Tara is really blossomed. Uh, she was great in Scream 5. Jenna Ortega deserves a world of credit. Her acting in Scream 5 was just brilliant. Same thing with Scream 6. She's just such a great actress. And you just continue to see her trajectory. Um, but it really is just Carpenter's sister focused, oriented, especially more Scream 6. You really saw the, the kind of transition of like Tara kind of being like another character to kind of being in the forefront almost as much as Sam and the film really centered around their relationship and their dynamic and, and kind of leading to like, okay, like Tara wants freedom. She doesn't want the past to dictate her life and control her life. Sam is that overbearing, overprotective sister that just wants to kind of keep Tara in a box and keep her as safe and sound as possible. And you saw that kind of struggle. And then at the end, you saw like Sam finally be able to let go uh, and then you had that like symbolism of like, okay, she chose her sister. She, she gave up the mask. We'll see how this moves forward. And we know Scream 7 is, is in the process of being written and all that stuff. But Jenna Ortega, as I mentioned, is a great actress. And her trajectory is really just skyrocketing. And she is supposed to be in the upcoming season two of Wednesday, as well as the new Beetlejuice 2, which is supposed to start filming today, I believe. Um, and with that, there are a lot of questions and concerns and reports that Jenna Ortega may not end up being in Scream 7, not because she may not want to, but because the studio may end up moving forward without her because of scheduling. So based on reports, Due to Jenna Ortega's schedule as an actress in demand, uh, Paramount Spyglass are allegedly in talks to move on without the actress in Scream 7. Now, again, we don't have any like real confirmation, no confirmed uh, stuff. Again, this is all just rumors and speculation, but it makes a lot of sense. And this is something that I've talked about dating back to Scream 5 of like, as Jenna Ortega's trajectory continues to climb, it's very likely you might see her end up either A, becoming too in demand to where they just can't work with her anymore, not because, you know, anything personal, but just, you know, she's working on all these other films, all these other projects, these big blockbuster style films, and she's just not going to be able to do Scream no more, or she's going to end up pricing herself out to where she costs too much uh, for a Scream budget. And both of those are a real concern, and both of those kind of seem like they're come into to reality, um, which begs the question, like Scream 7 could be a very different Scream because one, it's looking like you're not going to have radio silence. Two, there's even questions about is Sam going to be in this film because Melissa Barrera is doing that monster movie with radio silence. And three, it's like they were willing to move off of Sydney. Um, even with all the backlash and everything like that, they're willing to move off of uh, radio silence, it looks like. And, you know, with all the Christopher Landon news and stuff like that and him following everybody, like, if they're willing to move off of Jenna Ortega, then that just means nobody's really safe, right? And this is ex what I've talked about on the Lethal Collective. I've talked about it here. I've made videos about it. Like, I could see Scream 7 being a very different film because they want to keep this lightning in a bottle that they have, right? Got to remember, Paramount, Spyglass, all that. They, they spent, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in securing the rights to the Scream franchise. Now, it was a whole bundle of films, but Scream was the prize, right? That was the thing that they're hanging their hat on that they're hoping that they get their money back on. And they've had two very successful Scream movies, but they're still very, very likely in the red. And very likely hundreds of millions in the red. Because not only do you have to, not only did they pay what they paid for the rights to scream and everything, but on top of that, you know, you have to pay for the, the production of the films. You have to pay for the marketing. You have to pay the theaters, right? Like movies, yeah, like the movie made, you know, 180 million or whatever it's at right now. Uh, but they, they might have made, you know, 20 million in actual profit when all is said and done, 
right? Like I know the numbers look fantastic and everything like that, but you got to take into account inflation. You got to take like if you took it in comparison to the past films, this movie is didn't make that much money. You know, when you equate for ticket prices being, you know, $7 as opposed to now, they're like $15. That's a big difference, right? You basically cut the film price in half. And with that, everything else, like, you know, cost for employees, cost for development, cost for everything, all costs more now. So, you know, just because you see a film make, you know, a hundred million or 180 million on like a $40 million budget, you're like, oh, they made 140 million. It's like, well, no, they probably made a third of that because after again, all of the costs that go into marketing, all of the you know uh, theaters taking their cut and all that stuff, like that's why like they make their movies, they make their money off of like DVD sales and merch and little like things like that. Uh, so with that, there's probably pressure to continue to pump out these films as quickly as possible. And if Jenna Ortega isn't ready to go, are you really going to wait for her? Maybe, maybe not. I do think, look, I think out of anybody, you can make an argument Jenna Ortega is worth waiting for just because of the name and the box office draw that she is. Like, if Melissa Barrera can't do this, I think you'd survive without her. I really like Sam. I, I mean, I stuck up and defended her in Scream 5. Um, people have really came around on her since Scream 6, but still think you can do a movie without her. I mean, you could do a movie without Tara, but in comparison of, like, the big box off draw, Jenna Ortega is the biggest star in Scream right now. And so with that, there is this argument of, like, how much do they really need her? But... Scream 7, the moment we found out about it, the rumor was that they were going to continue this film, but, like, have it be its own thing. Like, they didn't want to tie in uh, to the films previously. Like, it'd be kind of its own story. It'd kind of be it almost like a new beginning, but with the, the surviving characters. So you'd still have the core four and all that stuff, but it'd be a completely different story that doesn't necessarily tie into Scream 5 and 6. I really like that idea. And I've even suggested ideas for if you don't do Sam, right? Yet you establish Tara and her wanting to be freed from the cage that is Sam. Uh, and she, now her and her relationship with Chad, you could really kind of have that be the focus. And Sam, maybe Sam and uh, and Danny, Josh Segura's character, maybe they go and just get away, go on a little vacation, something like that. You have uh, Tara and Chad and Mindy and maybe a new group of characters. Ghostface shows up. And they have to try to navigate that, right? Like, that could be a great way to kind of go about this. And that could definitely work. Well, if Jen Ortega can't be involved, well, then you could kind of do the same thing with Sam. You know, maybe have Jenna, who really wants to get away. Maybe her and Chad have a little falling out or something. And, you know, she goes away with, with other friends. And now you have it centered around Sam, Chad, and Mindy. Or you just... Do a new film with new characters. Maybe you have Kirby be the focus, right? And her as an FBI agent going and investigating a different ghost face attack that has nothing to do with Sam, Tara, Chad, and Mindy. That could definitely be a possibility, right? I mean, they established uh, through Kirby that there are ghost face attacks everywhere. Like, that's her specialty, is specializing in solving ghost face attacks, right? So you could do easily do a film with her as the main focus that... She goes and has to help a new group of characters that aren't the core four kind of navigate a ghost face attack. I think that's something that could definitely work. Um, but again, I, I, I do think that it would be in their best interest to have Jenna Ortega. I think uh, you're, you're in a position like you need her, right? She, who knows how much money by herself she drew in for Scream 6. Wednesday made put her on the map as a household name. She's about to do Beetlejuice 2. That'll very likely be huge. Wednesday 2, that'll likely be huge. And you, you, you need that draw, right? Because that's going to... all What Beetlejuice is going to do and Wednesday 2 is going to do is it's going to draw new audience and more people 
to scream six if she is the kind of front and center person. And so I really do think that there is an argument for them to, to really want Jenna Ortega. But if she can't do it, she can't do it. Again, I really think that there is pressure on the studios to get this done ASAP. Because the last thing they want to do is sit on Scream 7. And I know, look, I get it. Like, Scream fans, you know, we can wait. We just want a good movie. We just want a good product. Um, if it takes a year or two, there was, you know, a two, three-year gap between Scream 2 and Scream 3, all that stuff. I get it. But got to look at it from a business perspective. Got to look at it from a studio perspective. There is a lot of buzz around Hoarder. A lot of buzz around Scream. Do you really want to let that potentially die down? Because it's not about us diehard Scream fans, right? You watching this video right now, we're going to go see that movie regardless. If it comes out in 10 years. We're going to go see it. But what is the what is the general audience? Again, I, I really try to express this and stress this on numerous occasions. We are a small fish in a giant ocean when it comes to like the amount of people that go see that. Right, I'm talking about the diehard Scream fans, the ones that are in and out, watching Scream, watching videos from myself and other content creators, updating on all the news, learning all the ins and outs. A majority of people aren't doing that. You know, say there was, you know, 20 million people that saw this movie, we're probably one percent of that, if that. Right, I'm talking again of the diehard, like we can wait. Most people are the general audience that are, oh, hey, I know that film. Hey, that's Ghostface. Oh, who are all these new characters? That looks interesting. Let me go see that. Those are most people, right? So anyway, as always, this is a discussion. So I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think that uh, they uh, should do a Scream 6? And do you think it'd be okay to do it without her? Do you think not? Um, would you, do you think like, no, you have to have her. She's the big box office draw. Uh, what do you think about Sam? Could you do a film without Sam? I reveal whatever your thoughts are. Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments section below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos. And I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. Follow by the bell notification. Stay up to date with all things Scream. Join this wonderful community and all of our discussions. See you all in the next one. Thank you.